Hi, my name is Julia and today I'm going to be performing a chest tube dressing change. I checked the physician's order and the patient is due for a uh, chest tube dressing change once daily. I'm going to collect all my supplies and, I'm, and I have done my hand hygiene before I enter the patient's room. And uh, we're going to do a safety check if the patient is in distress, we're going to check the environment. We also want to do a safety check of uh, the suction, the entire drainage collection system, and uh, make sure that there's two emergency equipment at the bedside, uh, which is the two clamp forceps and sterile water. Okay, so now we can introduce ourselves to the patient. Hi, my name is Julie and I'm going to be your student nurse today. I just want to check your armband here. And uh, can you tell me your first and last name? Perfect. And your date of birth? Awesome. Okay, John, like we've talked about before, um, about our chest tube dressing change that we want to do is right now a good time for that? Good, okay. So what we're gonna do, John, we're gonna take off your old dressing, we're gonna take a good look um, underneath, we're gonna see if there's any signs of infection, we're gonna check the sutures, we also just assess the site, any drainage while we stabilize your tubing there. And then we're gonna clean it, we're gonna put on a new dressing for you. Does that sound okay? Good, okay. So I want to make sure that the patient um, is in a semi phallus position and in a clinical setting we would raise the head of the bed. I would also want to raise um, the bed to my waistline and the table and um, so it's comfortable for me while I do this dressing change. Okay, so I'm going to do my hand hygiene here and I'm going to open up my tray. And under here, I have my blue forceps. I'm gonna carefully take that out and place it here. Okay, so we wanna make sure that we have a one inch border. Within that one inch border, we wanna maintain the sterility. So I'm gonna use my blue forceps and take the strape and pass it myself. I'm gonna use the strape to put under the patient to collect any spills that we have when we're cleaning. Okay, and I also have a garbage bag here. I'm just going to pass this garbage bag to myself. And I'm open it up. I'm just place it right here. Okay. So now that I have removed some stuff, I'm going to add some stuff to my heel. I have two drainage sponges here. I'm going to just clean it back. And we're going to add this right here. I just have gelat nets. I'm just gonna peel this back. And we're gonna add this to the peel. This right there. Okay. I also add a um wanna add normal saline. Just, and we're gonna be very careful to not spill any on the stove field. Okay, so that looks good. Now what we can do is we can remove the old dressing and take a good look at it. So I'm going to do hand hygiene and I'm going to don clean gloves. Right. And we're just going to peel back the meat fix while stabilizing the chest tube here. assess for any drainage and exudates on there. Okay, and now we can use our forceps and remove the old uh, gelatin net. Okay, and we can discard both. And now we can assess the sites. It looks um, like there's no signs of infection, the sutures are in place, and we don't see any subcutaneous emphysema, and it looks good. Now we can start cleaning the sites. I'm just going to remove my gloves and hygiene and we're going to use a sterile technique using sterile gloves for this procedure. Okay so I'm going to um, don my dominant hand first and be very careful to not contaminate. I'm just going to grab the center that's sterile and drop it. Okay, 
So we can start cleaning the sites here. I'm just gonna now manipulate and organize my, my field here. Okay, and I'm gonna use forceps um, to create rosettes. And we're going to use these to dip it in on the ceiling. And we're gonna clean uh, closest to the sites here as, as we can. And we're going to work ourselves outwards. Okay. And outwards again. And now we can also clean the tubing. So be very careful here and we're gonna clean the bottom of the tubing. As well as the top. Now we can dry our sites, and I'm going to use 4x4s to do that, so it covers a larger area. And I'm going to start closer to the site and dry around. We can do that once again. one swipe and now we can also dry the tubing at the top there okay all right okay so now we can put on our gillette net which i'm going to use my gloves for and uh, the help of one forcep I'm just going to twirl this so it's in a nice and then we can bring this around the sides and make sure that it's as tight as we can And we make sure we don't want to contaminate our gloves or the forceps. Perfect. So that looks good. Right. Okay. So now we can add our um, two drainage sponge gauze here. And the first one I'm going to put this direction and then the second one we want to put in a different direction which I do like this okay and now we can add our four by fours on top and four by four and that looks good now I'm going to take off my gloves here I'm gonna do hand hygiene and I'm gonna put my me fix on top. So with the me fix, I have added uh, the main date and time already, and I'm going to put that on. I'm gonna make sure each side is um, occlusive as well. have a second one here and with this one we want to make sure that we get each side as well that we tent so 
so it stabilizes the tubing when the patient wants to move around. Okay, and we're going to make sure that each side is covered. There's tenting. And that looks good. We're going to make sure John is okay. John, are you doing okay? Perfect. All right. So now we can clean up our supplies and our area. And we're going to do a safety check of the room, make sure the bed is lowered, that the call bell is in reach. And then we can go out and document uh, what time, what we've assessed, and um, how the patient has tolerated. And, and that, is, that is it.